Hi, and welcome to the cover video that goes along with the Genevieve album that I made. Now, some of you have already, you saw my preview, and hopefully you've made the cover. I did do the Any Size Cover tutorial, so this that's the one, and I did it. I made sure you, everybody understood in that tutorial. I hope that that's the one we're using. So now we're going to decorate the outside. So this is going to be basically a three-part video because it does take a little more time, but not a lot, and it is so worth the outcome. So uh, the paper I'm using is the Bow Bunny Genevieve collection, and I did offer this. It's still on the website under paper kits and tutorial papers, I think, it, but it's on there. It's quite ex self-explanatory. Let me know if you can't find it. We're using the Bow Bunny Genevieve. It is just a strikingly beautiful paper and it is available in the collection kit and then I also put it together with the seam binding and the different um, uh, the paper and the extra collection kit papers that we're going to be using the, the ones that are missing out of the pack now for this one let's put that aside um, of course just this cover part is done and this is what we're going to be working on is this cover part and we're on, in this video actually we're starting with that yellow is hard to see. We're going to be doing the seam binding on the side and the ruffles. Now, I don't usually make my album covers first because it's kind of hard to work on from there, but I found that once I get my hinges in, see, I need to be able, we need to be able to lay it. Sorry, I just hit the keyboard, but I just moved my keyboard since it's now cordless and I won't be hitting it again. Anyway, we need to be able to lay it down. It just makes it so much easier to work on the surface. And it's easier to do these two spines before we do this because we're going to have our ribbon and everything seal start getting in our way. So we're going to do these two. Make sure we don't hit anything off. We're going to be doing these two. There we go, now we can see it better. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now, one thing with this, um, method the seam binding is a little bit thicker so you do get kind of a puckery look if you don't want that puckery look and i'll show you because you i went I only skipped one one hole you can do it even more so let me put this aside by using a thinner string so if you don't want to use let me untie my homes if you don't want to use the uh thick seam binding then you can use, see, it's harder to work on once we have our pages. This one actually I did with ribbon. I was lucky enough to have just a few pieces of this little holy ribbon, um, and I can't find it anywhere anymore. But you can use a thinner string the, with what we're using also, and you can go ahead and weave it differently so you can get this look. And the way I'm showing you, you can, you know, you'll be able to do any of them. Either way, and you'll have it all figured out, no problem. But it is easier to work on the spines this way. So what we're going to start with, we're going to start with the corset. What you want to do is, and I know the beginning's a little bit lengthy because we have some explaining to do. I used this Martha Stewart punch with these holes. And I'll be honest with you, I've had it for a while. I don't know what it's called. I'm sure you can find it on um, Amazon if some of the Joann stores do have them and some of the Michaels. And Michaels right now has a ton of theirs they've clearanced out. So this is the one I use. But I have, I, I experimented with this one with the Fiskars. And I know this one is still available at Joann's. This one will work, but it is harder to thread. So you're not going to want to use seam binding with this. It makes it difficult. Any other punch you have that is scalloped with a hole will work. So don't feel that you have to use only these two punches. Look in your stash of punches and see what you have and they will work. Now I'm going to be using this one to start. So what we want also are these two plastic sewing needles. Sorry, that darn light is just driving me. There we go. Um, pick them up at Walmart, pick them up at Joann's. It just makes the process go by faster when you're using seam binding because it's it's so thin. Just get everything out. And I didn't want to have everything like completely ready because I felt you needed to see 
um, it, everything I'm doing because during Christmas and well it started in September it was so busy I couldn't even decorate the albums on film so I just kind of put them together for you so you could could um, see them and get going but this time I really want to just do the videos and show you even the decorating of the flowers everything I do because we are going to be making a different style page that you may not have made before so this will hook onto our hinge then it's going to be like the envelope pocket page and I'm going to show you two ways so if you don't have an envelope punch board you'll still be able to make an envelope um, it'll be a little bit different but I got it figured out so that we have our measurements it'll be the square I'm going to use both styles in this book when you turn it over you will have a pocket and on this one it's going to be so cute because once we get this piece decorated it's going to flip over instead of staying down I'm flipping it over there will be a magnet and it's going to be a flap and we are also going to make a pocket out of it so it's a little more lengthy that's why there there will be three videos so we'll have the three different um, or two different styles but different things we'll be doing with the envelope so let me just put these aside so I don't lose them let's get started what you want is to do the video and I did it on let's see if that helps you guys there um, I didn't but it doesn't help me I apologize we're gonna have to just move there we go maybe I did the video on how to make any size cover for your album because there was a lot of questions so I went ahead and did that and you should have already constructed that and come up with this little album and inside will just be blank so we have a completely blank canvas to work with what you're going to do now is with the paper that you use so if you didn't use white um, which I felt bit went best you want to cut two strips of paper 12 inches long by one and a half inches wide. The reason being is it, it was very hard to match up these holes and we do want them to match top to bottom and this was the easiest way to I could find and it seemed to work out really, really well. Now on the 12 by 12 paper, I just lined it up here. I've got a ruler grid on this also and I just marked the middle at six. It's not going to be exactly the middle, but it'll be close enough. Now what we want to do is just punch it like your regular, like you would. And like I said, this I'm not going to stop the camera. I'm just going to keep going so that we can just start to finish together. And then, like I said, with whatever punch you're using, you'll know exactly where to start. So there's that. Got off a little bit. That's just fine, though, because most of this will be hidden under a ruffle when we're done. Um, let me stop. So see, this is the reason I punch a full 12 by 12. Do you see how we have a different start and ending there? And this took me quite a few tries to finally figure out how to get it so that our holes would match on our spine. Okay. Okay, once you have them cut, we know our spine, let me open this, we know it's eight and a half inches long on our cover. Move the keyboard again. And then also, let's see, I did the spine piece, I'm going to turn this around, because I did it here on the closure side. 
And the reason I did that is that's the side people I feel see a lot more than the other side. And I'm going, it might be a little hard white on white. I'm going to lay these right down because you want them right on the edge. And if it's easier for you to work with it folded, well, that's okay too until you get your bearings. It's just in the camera, it gets really close. Okay, so we're going to kind of just lay these next to each other. Now you'll notice they're going to be too long. And we are going to cut these because you need to determine how much space do you want in between. You know, you may want a lot of space and you may want just a little bit of space. But if you're going to be using um, a thinner ribbon and you are going to space them further apart, you will want to cover this with your pattern paper first. But because I'm using the seam binding, I won't need to. I'm just going to kind of determine what I need to cut off of each one and it looks like I'm going to cut off about a half of an inch so I want to do that first it's a smaller cutter I don't use this one too often so I'm just going to lay this down and I want to take half of an inch off so I'm using my half inch marking over on this side I'm just going to line that all up Take that back. I'm starting at a quarter of an inch on each one. When I put it up there on the half inch, that looked like a little much. So this is the part that does take a little bit of finagling, working out. Let me double check again. Okay, I'm glad I only took a quarter of an inch off. So. I took a quarter of an inch off. Yeah, ended up taking a hair more on this one for some reason, not paying attention, but it's okay. Let me just take a little bit more off. You do want them to be the same width. I don't know why I did that. I don't use my little cutter a lot, so I'm used to my big one. There we go. And this is the part you'll just be doing a little bit of adjusting here and there till you get your measurements pretty close to each other. See if I'm off a lot. Yeah, I'm going to take just a hair bit more off because I don't have my measuring skills with me today. I guess sorry about this. And this little old cutter of mine. Since I got my huge one, I don't use this a lot. I think we did it. But the huge one doesn't handle the little tiny cuts either. There we go. So, um, our first cut, we want to just basically get our holes lined up. We are going to cut this off, but I still like to start with them matching perfectly. So what I'm going to do so that I know my top hole is perfectly matched, I'm just going to take my scissors after I match the holes and I'm going to cut it off so that they are exactly the same at the top. And this isn't going to matter eventually the top and bottom. The only thing that will matter is where do you want, because you, you can cover with flowers, where do you want it to be matched perfectly, top, bottom, or do you want to try and match both of them so you don't use any flowers? Or, But I did not get them, let me show you, 
Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. I mean, the bow. You can hide it with the ribbon. Boy, I'm not with it this morning. I need to pay attention. They weren't quite perfect. That's why I added some extra ribbon to hide it. But you can also hide it with some flowers at the bottom. So don't worry if it's not perfect once we get going here. So I'm going to go ahead. My cover is eight and a half inches long. I'm going to cut each one of these at eight and a half inches long. And make sure you're cutting off the right side. This looks. Okay. Now, when you cut these off, your bottom should match also. So there we have our perfect top and bottom. Now, do you see the top? Mine cut off the, the hole just a little bit. So I am going to make that my top. I want my bottoms. I don't want to put anything at the bottom. And I do want the top anyway. There's going to be a lot of decoration. Um, we're, I'm going to add some extra ribbon, probably some flowers. So the next step we want to do is put our score tape on the back. And I'm going to use the 3 8 of an inch. I want to start off pretty squared. So your 3 8 of an inch should fit in here just fine. Now if it goes over any of the holes you're using, it'll be okay as long as it's not over your main holes. You don't want those covered. And then make sure I get the score tape, believe it or not, on the right side. Okay of the paper. And if you can also put this on both edges, um, both spines, or you can do it on your opposite spine, however you would like. Okay, so then I'm just going to go ahead and match up the bottom. And then let's put our other piece down. And really this isn't a lot of work. It's just when we go step by step, um, you can get this done in less than an hour. Okay. Now, so that we can get our needle in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this by using something. You can use a pair of tweezers and I'm going to just crease that up, just a soft crease, because now we want we want our holes to stick up. As a matter of fact, you will want a pair of tweezers. And if you are if you sew and you have a serger, you might even have these. These are fantastic to use for this. Or you may have the tweezers if you're if you make flowers, the long needle nose, those work great. So just bring this up. You can get your finger under there. Let me show oh no. I had another one done. I I sold that. I showed this is actually still sticking up, but see then it looks like it's almost three dimensional. But this is much easier to work on this way. Now for this album, let me show you. I had used, I used the yellow and I'm going to actually use the navy blue on here. Two reasons. It's going to show up better for you to see and then I won't have two albums identical. So I'm going to grab out my seam binding. And it's up to you how much you pull off. I like to pull off about a yard. And, well, let me double measure for you. I think I started with two yards, and then I had just cut it and did flowers. No, I did. Let's go ahead. You're going to want to start out 
with the two and a half yards of whatever you're using. Let me just set that aside. Now, this is where you're going to take your needle. Only because it really, it does help. And these little plastic ones are great. So we're going to start on that side. And let me bring this down as we're working. And we're going to go across. Don't pull because you don't want to tear your paper. I'm going to leave this side threaded because we're going to now thread our other side once you get it somewhat straight. And then also, you know, try and, and lay it flat. Now this is where also if you want, I actually went, I skipped one. You can actually skip two and three if you want more of a wider look. But I, like I said, I wanted to do more of the crinkled look, look fuller. So now I'm going to just go ahead with each side. If you don't have these, I'll tell you what, it still works with these tweezers. Because you can actually get your tweezer through that hole grab your ribbon and pull it through. So if you don't have them, uh, these, these little needles, these will work or just some needle nose. Now you'll just decide, do you wanna go every one or every two? Now every three is going to give you more space in between. And so I'm just going to go every other one, just your ribbon as you're going so that you don't put a lot of stress, there we go, on our paper. Don't pull, keep it relaxed. And so now I'm going to cross over again. Very simple, especially if you've ever, you know, done up a wedding dress, the back of it, or you've, you've done a corset. Now I'm just going to keep with my right, because I want to keep that herringbone look. And I'm going to help it lay a little flatter. Oh, you know what? I'm thinking I went every one on my yellow album. Oh, I did. Do you know what? On my yellow album, I did every single hole. And that's what gave it See how much closer it is? It gave it that fuller look, so I don't want to take it undone, and I still like the look, so I'm just going to keep going every other one. So I did do every single hole. I crisscrossed every single hole on the yellow one. So now you get to see a different look. I'm going to keep with the right. One thing I like about using the paper punch, it's not always easy to find the lace that you want to be able to, you know, use with the holes like that other that I had. And your paper, you, you're always going to have paper. Oh, I, I'm liking that with the white behind, so. But generally, if I was using, um, I was skipping a lot more and wanting more space, I definitely would use my pattern paper here. And remember, when you are using the seam binding, it's not going to lay super flat like a skinny ribbon would. And it would, but it would if you had bigger holes. And then you can see as we're going, they're starting to pull down so you don't have it sticking up so much. And really, see, this doesn't take long at all. It's the ruffles. Now, when we get to the ruffles, you're going to want a spritz bottle, squirt bottle. We have to do it with wet paper. I love it. I think it's, it's really pretty. Oops. Sorry, 
sorry about that. And I'll tell you, once you start doing this, it's a, it, I think it's a lot of fun. You can do it on front of your cards. You can do a lot with this. Now see, if you, if you need to do any adjustments, you can. You can pull it just like, um, like I want to adjust that a little bit. But remember, you've got to be gentle. This is paper, not ribbon. There. Let's get that one to lay a little flatter. Maybe this one in the back. Use my finger and just let it guide over. No, it doesn't want to, so that's okay. Now, I, because of this hole right here, and it's not going to be, it's really not going to hold it, I'm still going to go ahead and see if that will work. It will. I shouldn't have, I should have gone the other one, so now I'm going to end up a little backwards here. Let me see how it looks. Oh, it's going to be fine. Now this hole is already all the way through, for instance. So, that one had a little bit, but I'm just going to work it out. So we're going to end there. I'm going to remove my needles. Actually, let me put them safe and sound so I don't lose them. Now I'm just going to take this and cross it over. Be gentle, remember. bow tied. Double checking if it's too big. Now I, I need to decide here maybe I just want to knot or am I going to put some I need to put either flowers oops, or there's going to have to be some bows up there. But I'm not going to worry about that until the end when we do our flowers because, I mean, our ruffles because that's next. Now I'm just going to, I'm leaving it all intact just because I may want to tie more bows with that. And then I'm just taking it to the top and I'm going to fold it over because as we're putting our ruffle on here, we, we don't want to get our ribbon. And this is what, what these are now is our ribbon. I mean, our ruffles. So we're going to want to pick out the pattern paper and set this aside for now that you're going to use for the album that's pretty much done. I used the front of this and the back of this. But for this one, let me bring this up, I'm going to use this paper and I'm going to use so I want to do the blue and the yellow, which will be on the spine, and I'm going to make the two ruffles. So what you're going to do is, just from your bottom, you're going to cut two one-inch pieces to start. No, cut four, sorry. Okay, so we have our four pieces, that's right. And you're going to want spritz bottles. I meant to have everything out. Let's make sure. And score tape. Yes, we're going to put those together with the score tape. Okay, with your spurt, uh, spritz bottle, um, this is just a sample I had once, and so I decided it would be great to use. 
um, you can buy your little spritz bottles in like the craft store and but this one works right you don't want a heavy heavy string to go onto your papers okay first thing we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to pre-attach these I'm just going to use some score tape and the reason I'm attaching it now is when paper is a little bit damp or wet it's going to be really hard to connect so let's just put our ends together Ooh, that one's a lot wider. I don't know why. Um, let me back up here for a second. See, I did this once to remember. We are going to use these, so please don't kill me. <laughs> We're going to only use three quarters of an inch. I forgot on this side. See, this is what happens. So just cut them down if you haven't taped them together. And if you have taped them together, that's fine too. All you have to do is cut off that tape piece. I'm really sorry. So let's go ahead and cut these down to three quarters. Um, if you've watched my other videos, this is I start making things. I don't. I just don't write them down. I use my just whatever comes to my mind and if I write it down I can't write it down I've never been a person to really write it down journal or do any of that I just do it from my, my thoughts I guess and so this is where I have to back up I have to tell you I'm grateful you're patient with me okay now we can attach didn't quite get that tape off that old one. For some reason, I'm still a little, this is crazy. There's no reason these should not be the same size. I really do know how to measure. It's fine. Oh, my ends aren't meeting up here. You do want them pretty much the same size. Oops. It's really odd. Take that little tiny bit off. Most are great. You know, I just may end up cutting another piece. That's all there is to it. This is going, going to drive me and you nuts. Okay, that one, that one's great. And it's going to be fine. It's not that bad off. Okay, when I'm spritzing, because it does get a little messy. I really like to have a towel here. <laughs> Never thought yellow on yellow. Okay, so I'm just going to start here. We're going to just spritz it. Nothing too heavy to begin with. Just rub your fingers. Oh, you know what? If you're not using, um, this is something I should have told you, a paper you're, you're familiar with, make sure you spray it first. 
to make sure it's going to be okay. Now I'm just going to start folding this. You might come up to spots that feel a little hard to do. You're just going you're what you're doing is you're you're basically just crinkling this together. Now if you sew, it's like pulling your gathering threads. Okay, but you're going to do this by hand. Now any place that you come that feels a little bit stiff, just give it a little spritz of water. And see, it's, it's not going to look anything like very fantastic or you're going to think I'm just wadding this paper up and it's looking terrible, but it's not, trust me. Now when you come to the area where you've caped it, you may have to just encourage it a little bit more, but it'll go, be a little stiff. And you don't have to tape it together, you can do these in, in pieces. 12 inch pieces and then just when you glue them together on your book they'll come together. Now if you have some spots that are drying out you want to just keep spritzing them. Now if you have a heat gun it works terrific to get these dry or if you're using a space heater in your work area just dangle it over but you're going, we're going to have to leave these to dry Pull it back up again because we're wanting a ruffle. Remember, ruffles are scrunched up. And this is pretty, pretty wet. So I'm just going to set that aside and this is what it will look like. Turn over the blue. Okay, that has to dry. So let's grab our second piece. And you know, um, Depending on how we spread it out, it still may not be enough. We may have to, to go ahead and cut another single strip or two. And that's the thing with the ruffles. You just don't know until you start putting it on because it depends on how it got crumpled. It depends on how you want it to look on the book. You may want tons of the ruffles. And so that's the nice thing. It, you'll have your paper handy. You'll just cut another strip and wrinkle it up. And sometimes your hand will get tired. I just I let that crinkled part go. And just keep going. And if it remember if it's feeling a little dry, just give it a spritz. No, I think we'll be fine. So now what we're going to have to do is this does have to dry so that you don't have to listen to my heat gun. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. I'm going to get mine dry. Go ahead and get yours dry. If you want to use a hair dryer even, hold it down and we will come back and get this all put on. Okay, mine is dry and if in case you're new to crafting, this is the heat tool that I swore I would never own because what do I need that for? Let me tell you, you need this for a lot of stuff. It's not that loud. It is super hot. You can you you'll do your embossing, you'll do your drying of your ruffles, you'll do drying of your adhesives. You'll use this for a lot of stuff. So we can go ahead and remove our towel, but you'll still need it. Now decide which side is going to be up. Mine's going to be yellow since I use blue, and on this, on my other one, I use the blue up. So now you're just going to open this. I know it's going to be nice and firm. We're going to take our one inch quart or a half quarter inch score tape, and you know this step. Well, I. I've done it and then I left it out on a couple just to see the difference and I think this does really help your ruffles to stay together. Now you can also, you know, adhere it down but I didn't feel it was strong enough so I brought out the hot glue gun. Now you can use your hot glue gun, you can use glossy accents or just a wet adhesive in addition to this. 
but on your album cover you're going to want some something more. Now you're just going to stick to everything here. You're going to want to be pushing this down as you go. It's it's going to be a little tight. You can pull it just like it if it was elastic. And then when it stretches back, see it'll it'll take that score tape into the creases. And this is why you want it perfectly dry. Your score tape will not stick. Now we're going to just remove the back. Turn it over. And put it upside down. Let's see. It shouldn't matter. And now you're just going to start squishing it together again. And then you'll notice your ruffles will start adhering ah, everywhere to each other, everything. And it should go back. You may have to do, you know, encouraging it here to go back to its shape that you created. And it, yes, it will be sticky. But remember, this is just like pulling up the, the strings when you're doing your gathering, when you're sewing. You don't really know how it's going to look. And you'll be able to adjust it a little bit if you need. Now this was one I remember now in the other album, my first album, I didn't do the score tape because I, after, I did it on the spine, but I didn't do it on, on the other spine when I did all the ruffles because I didn't want, I didn't want, um, I wanted to be able to adjust them. There we go. So remember, keep your your string behind and oh, I'll turn it that way. That will be good. You want to just lay it down but don't stick it because you still yeah you'll be able to adjust it. There we go. Okay now sorry it's my daughter. I just need to say the word yes. <laughs> and what I'm going to do with my glossy accents, right along about a quarter of an inch in, love glossy accent at times, but let me tell you, it loves to seal up no matter what I do. Okay. Um, you can use a different wet adhesive. You just want a bead of it. Or you can use your your hot glue gun. It, it's totally up to you. I'm going to start it at the top. Now, before I go down any further, I just want to bring, there we go, I want to bring this down to the bottom. And you want to go back and you just, you're going to push it down. And because it is um, the glossy accent, you'll need to just go through, do some pressuring here. Close the cover a little bit, just readjust it so it's not hanging over the hinge. Now you'll see on on the hinge, I mean down this middle part is where I put the pearls to give it that finished finished look. 
and yet see it, it looks like the ruffles are sticking up but you do want to adhere it because when we when we put the glue here to add our pearls it'll help to glue this side down and just play with it, squish them to get the look that you like. Now it just depends too on what kind of uh, pearl you want to use. There's the flat back pearls. Um, I'm just going to grab well, these aren't what I would use but you can use the strands Silver might not look bad at all, though. So we will get to that next. Now, we're going to do the same thing here. Let's move our book over. Pull it open. And on goes the score tape. everything brought together again. Oh, really wants to stick there. being stubborn where I join my two pieces together. There we go. Now as you know, I'm just showing you how I created mine. You are going to do it how you are comfortable so there's no right way or wrong way and as I always mention in my videos, you may come up with an absolute fantastic quicker, easier method than what I've shown you and don't hesitate to share because we all love paper crafting and when we can find a little bit of an easier, fun way to do it, I think it's funner to share. And now we're going to attach this to this side. Basically the exact same way. Now, if I was, um, wasn't was doing it on camera, I probably would go ahead and use my hot glue gun, to be honest. It does go by faster, but then it also is, I thought it would be harder to see me work, and I burn myself a lot, and I just don't want to want to have to stop because I burnt myself again. So the glossy accents work well. It just takes a little more drying time and sometimes I don't have the patience. So I just grab the hot glue gun. And 
And then on Facebook, I have a page called Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. We do do uh, crops. We share our work. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's almost a drama-free page. We don't care whose design you've used or what, and you're showing your work. We're just there to support each other and have fun and win prizes. And so if you want to join us on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations on Facebook, just come on over, re send us a member request, and especially if you've made this, I want to see your finished work because I'll bet it's, it's going to be fantastic. Okay, there is, there's that. Now let me grab something. Sorry, I should have had my other pearls out. Okay, I've got a couple left. So I'm not going to be using these. I'm going to show you though. I buy these, um, and the reason I don't carry them is you can just go up to Walmart and grab them. I love them. They're the flat back pearl. They don't, they're not yellow. They they have a beautiful white. They're EK Success, I believe. Yeah, and I found out the Simplicity Pattern Company. Um, I think they make these, to be honest with you, and so that you can't buy them anyway to sell wholesale unless you're going to buy trillions. So these are actually the best bet. They're a little over two dollars, and they're beautiful. Look at this. Come in one. So, I'm going to go ahead and start with what I have left. I should have picked up some more. Or you can use the rolls and you can decide. Now, if you're going to go along the outside edge, you're going to have to be careful because you don't want to interfere with the opening here. I took them down the middle. And you do want to use an extra adhesive with these. Oh, sorry. And I just, I usually start down here at the bottom. They're pretty sticky, but they, um, they will come up. For right now, I'm just going to put them down like that. And then I'll go back because when I glue them with the glossy accent, you almost have to do every single one. This is the other thing, they come in a strand like this and it's really nice, then you just match up your end the best you can. And then I come up here, I just cut that right off. I'm just giving those an extra push. Now I'm gonna do the same here. Grab some more. I hope I have some more yet. And actually, they're really easy to work with. little guys in a flower. Like I said they're pretty sturdy and I'll watch it and I'll just go back with my glossy accents and start putting down any if they do come up. But there, isn't that pretty? There you have your corset binding. And like I said if I was doing this again I probably would have brought those closer but I won't worry about it. I can use a little Gosh, you can use anything to decorate with these days. So, now I want to look at this and see. And actually, I think I'm wanting, I want to add some yellow. So I'm just going to open that up. Let's knot it. Okay. Now for this knot, I want to cut it down pretty close because I don't want it to show there we go. And let me grab 
yellow seam binding. You could even use more white if you wanted. And I don't think those aren't going to be long enough, but they're going to work. So if you had your three yards, if you bought it in the paper kit, set those aside. You still, because that was two and a half yards, you still should have a yard. And then you will have three yards of the yellow or whatever you decided to do yours with the yellow or the blue. I'm cutting that off because it's pretty much crinkled. I'm going to cut off. Now I'm, I'm going to put these two together for this one. Oh, might help if I cut that, huh? Can't live without that seam binding. Okay. Let's kind of match them up here. And I'm just going to tie my bow. And I know it looks like I'm wasting a lot, but it will get used. It's just, I can't, just not very precise. So I have to do things this way. And it looks like I did more of a floppy bow on the other one and I like that look, so. Hey, the great thing with these videotapes, you can fast forward through all of this, so. Oh my goodness, never gotten it that tight before. There we go, let's get some movement here. And then for the cover, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna be doing some fun crinkling with this. It's pretty stiff. Yellow's not quite as stiff as the blue. There we go. Now I'm not going to cut my streamers yet because I want to wait till I put this on, pick up my book. And you know, I may even decide to put a little charm in the middle or tie a charm from my streamers. So I like to leave them a little long till the end. Go ahead and squish that up. It's not playing the way I want it. Okay, for this though, I am going to go ahead. I'm just going to put a glob on top of that knot. Two reasons. It's going to help the knot stay and it's going to be a nice glob for my my ribbons. Let that dry and then you know you can always go back once it's dry and you can pull on it. And I'm going to go ahead with my streamers and for right now I'm going to leave them just the length of the book. I may want to end up crinkling them or we may want to add something up but it just I don't want it to cover that but I do want to leave them longer so I may even want to tie another couple of bows with it okay. and there you have isn't that pretty now hold that up of course you can't see mine I'm holding it up I want you to hold it up and look at yours and just marvel at how wonderful of a job you just did. Isn't that gorgeous? You can do, can you imagine the princess books you can make, the wedding books, how pretty they'll be? And look how simple that was. So, so, so simple. Now, let's move to our opposite spine. And it's, it's pretty simple. And one thing that I learned on here, these were actually to, I'm going to make our ruffles a little bit wider, okay? And let me just cut one piece, of, and you're still going to want your 12 by 12. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it 12 by 12. Okay, these ruffles, just so you know, so if you want to do it, this amount, they were one inch ruffles. And I cut one. Seven, I think I cut 10 and there because you're going to have to cut them and I have little pieces left over so you're going to want to cut 10 one inch pieces 
I'm or you can do 10 one and a half inch pieces. I'm actually going to do the one and a half inch pieces and I'm using this again because I want it to still coordinate with the ruffles on the other side so I'm going to use one side blue the other side yellow but see they're going to be wider we're going to have a little bit of a wider ruffle I won't need as many but I'm still going to cut just as many just in case and you'll want to cut up your your paper one sheet so let's we'll get those all cut up I'm going to set that aside and I'll be right back when we cut up our papers. I have my one and a half inch strips and on camera I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do three more together just spritzing them and then I will come back when all mine are done so let's spritz them and check the orientation of your paper the pattern. Okay let's go ahead and just get these all crumpled up Any dry spots. Oh, one thing we're going to be doing a little different on this one. You need, I forgot, a pen with the round barrel is a good good one because these I wanted to stick out a little bit more. Um, a crochet hook works wonders. I'll show you, I've got my crochet hook. And after you crumble it, you want to now give this a little more rounded. Now the reason I didn't do this on the side, we did, I didn't have the room to work with that we're going to have on our spine. So now we just want to wrap it around or you might have a Cricut or a Silhouette tool. This is another great one to work with. Um, I'm working with the crochet one because it's a little smaller. I can't remember what gauge. It's a 5, 5.0 mm. And then make sure that you go back through. And let me be right back. Let's see what the dogs are barking at. Okay. <clears throat> so go ahead and crinkle that back up. And now that the dogs are all taken care of. Now you'll see the difference, how you're starting to get that nice little roughly look. Once again, these do have to dry. So we're going to put that aside. Let's go to our next one. Now I want to do every other one for me. And that's what I did on this one. If you remember, I used the blue floral with that on the back. So this one is your... Genevieve Petite Paper. That's what's on this album. And I just went back and forth with each color. Now for this one, I'm using the birdcage one. And then one side will be yellow, one side will be blue. And it does matter that you do each side correctly because you saw how hard and dry your your paper will get once it dries. You need to be able to have it dry in the orientation you mean for your paper to go. I'm going to put it down and I'm just going to do, so you want that end to be a little bit flat. Now I'm just pinching the bottoms. I'm trying not to touch my pleats. Oh, let's see, kind of wet. So if you find it is too wet, you may have to wait till it's a get more towards the drying process. Just roll your your rounded item. Like I said, the smaller the better. Paintbrush handle. Crochet hooks are great for everything and anything. Okay, this one's for some reason soaked up a lot of the water, so we're going to put that aside. And here's our third one. Like I said, we're making the three together. When I come back, you should have all your ruffles 
done. And we will adhere. Now, one thing I did different. I did not do the score tape on the back of each one of these. I used my hot glue and I'm going to use the hot glue gun on this. I found it's just quicker and less frustrating. Now on the skinnier little pieces, it was easier to use the score tape because like I mentioned, I burned my fingers a lot. This one actually really came up nice. Now you'll also notice the thicker or wider your ruffles are the more of this ruffle you're getting. The other one was quite small. Actually, that one turned out really nice. I'm pleased with that. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to get all my ruffles made. And when we come back, they should be dry. And yours should be dry. And we'll pick up on our next step. My ruffles are all made, but they are not dried. And so one thing I want to show you before they do dry is the Shimmer Mist. And actually, it's a sheer. It's by Imagine Crafts. This came in um, a swap I had done, but another great one to use. Let me get it up here. It's all in the, I haven't unpacked everything. It is the Bow Bunny uh, Gold Glimmer Shimmer Spray, and that's going on the website very soon. Or let me just fix it. The Sugar. The Sugar is an excellent one to use too. But I'm going to use this one because it's still in here. And I am going to go ahead and I want to spritz. I'm going to glimmer up my ruffles while they're drying. So this is totally up to you. This is, a, like I said, a gold color. I don't know if you can see it. You might see it sort of coming out. It's not a heavy, I'm not doing it heavy. I just want a little bit of glitter, glimmer. And I'm almost out of this one. So just put a little bit on there shimmer these up before I dry them. Yeah, I think we're just about at our end. Hopefully we can get one more. This was a fun little thing to have. I really like the way it's on the blue. Oh, and it's all over my desk now and it's on everything I own. So that is one thing with Glimmer Spray. Yes, I probably should have put up my little canopy but that's okay so I will uh, get these dry and get my hot glue gun on super hot and we'll be back to adhere them on okay I hope you can hear me let me turn this off for a minute I just wanted to do the last bit of the drawing on camera because I wanted you to see if you are using a heat tool um, you're going to notice it more than just when they're sitting drying because you're going to see how your gathers are actually going to be pulled up because of the heat tool let me show you You'll see it kind of moving there, actually coming together more. I don't know if you can see that. But they will, there we go. You'll see how it's starting. Oh, no, you won't because my tool's in the way here. You see how it kind of starts pulling those gathers. I don't know if you can see it real well. If, there we go. See how it pulls them together? It's, I hope you can see it. It's really cool. So I'll be honest with you, if you don't have a heat tool, but you have a coupon to Michael's or Joann's, you can get this brand, the Darius, or you can get, um, oh, good old, what's her name, Martha Stewart. Don't hesitate. Buy one, because you're going to find so many uses for it. And now that my ruffles are dry, whether yours dried um, naturally, or just want to make sure they're dry, and you'll notice how stiff they became. But one thing is, you may have lost... Some of your shape just go back and now it's dry kind of reshape it to how you want it and um while they were drying a lot of times you'll hear my phone go off i do keep in contact still so that the if anyone's crafting and they might need help with my pattern so i did have a lady just message me i don't know if something's going on somewhere but she was kind of panicky she made one of my albums and she wants to sell it and she says I need your permission and ladies or gentlemen if you're watching I hope you are you don't need my permission to sell anything you make like I said I don't know if something's happened to her or if she's almost sounds traumatized the poor thing but if you make something that I've shown you a tutorial on 
All I can say is I'm not the only one that's done this tutorial probably. It's just I have figured out how to do it either my way or I just figured it out. Um, I don't own it. It is yours to share and, and do with you what you want once you make it. And actually I have seen some of my albums come up and they've made them. And to be honest with you, I'm thrilled. I am. It actually warms my heart to know that you have taken something that I've shown you how to do probably even in made it better and you are making some money off of it because that's what crafting is about for those of us who really want to be serious crafters we're not in competition with each other so you go ahead and you sell it to your heart's delight share your pictures please don't be afraid to share your pictures thinking that I'm going to reprimand you I'm not um, I think it's great that you want to get out there and make a little business and crafting for yourself. And you know, for some ladies, or just some even gentlemen that craft, this is their livelihood because they can't work outside the home. And having fresh ideas only helps you make more sales. So I've got a little bit of a, a wet spot here. We don't want any wet spots or it's not going to adhere. Okay. And it looks like, yeah, I'm just going through. I want to get everything a little... Now, like I mentioned, we're going to use the hot glue gun. It just works better. And I think my kitty has now found me, and I apologize, he might be jumping up here in the screen. There, that is my children. Okay. And that one really went up. I like the way that looks. Now see, you've got some springiness. You'll be able to maneuver them. And I think everything else looks just fine, so we're ready to go. So I like to keep, so I'm going to use opposite colors. I'm going to move those out. Let's move the towel. Mm. Yeah, we may have a little visitor here if he jumps up. Let's grab our cover. You know, I'm, I'm just loving, I'm, I love that look. It gives such personality to the books. I hope you just went and showed everybody what you did and how beautiful it is. Okay, again, let's lay it flat, which we can't do if we have a hinge in there because this is where our hinges will attach. Now, the first thing I want to do is, let's decide, start with blue, start with yellow. We're going to start with blue. To me, it's the heavier color. Now, you don't need this whole piece, so you can actually get by with cutting it in half. I just pull it open a little bit doesn't really matter where you cut it and I now have a lot of these little things in my in a box that I've labeled just for ruffles because I can pull them out stick that down on a card some flowers I don't throw those away one thing you want to watch again is your folds because you have to stay away from that edge now you don't want it to hang over the edge Okay, so I'm going to grab my hot glue gun. Yeah, we're going to have a visitor here. He's not going to jump down for nothing. Go all the way across. Pick up a few things here and there. So I've got glue there. It's going to match my bottom. Two ends. I'm going to push it down. Now you're almost going to flatten. Okay, you want to almost flatten. The top of that. Now if you're using hot glue. play. It. Now don't worry when things get out of sync. Because we're going to cover it. And if it for some reason does come over that fold. Or you don't like it. So you're going to be able to play with it. Move it. But make sure you do flatten that just like you would if you were sewing a ruffle. So there's our first one. Now our second one, if you're alternating colors, 
you're going to want to try and make sure you start right where that one is so make sure it's where you want it and then we're just going to cut some of this off straighten it out a little bit see how I'm here comes the kitty okay Winston now if you're uncomfortable with just putting glue all the way across let me show you we're just going to do one end and hold that down Maybe pick it up a little bit make sure you're getting it to that edge don't worry if glue comes out the top either you're not going to see it then you can just go ahead flip this over and I don't know if you've seen or heard about this new craft bond um, glue gun by Elmer's it came out just before no right after Thanksgiving or before and I went ahead and got it it was it was more than I paid for a glue gun I think they're like $35 I found it on Amazon it's incredible see it's it has a base it has a charger base can you see that sort of sorry my won't reach there's a charger base and you can actually leave it off for about 15 minutes and it keeps it just keeps going and going now sometimes you'll have to reapply more because it likes to settle down into those ruffles the only thing is you just don't want to get glue on the these two edges here and push it down so you have semi flat surface and if you notice or you think you're maybe going a little bit crooked that doesn't matter either isn't that pretty and you can flatten those too if, if you feel that yours are sticking out too far and if you are very you know particular about straightness you can go through and pre-measure lines totally totally up to you so I'm going to grab another one and we may be able to get two for some reason this one didn't shrink as much and that's okay and the glue sticks again they're more expensive I've only found them on Amazon they're different they're totally totally clear you won't have any yellow drying you won't have um, a lot of those strings and if you do they're so easy to remove with this one and it seems like see just it seems like this uh, glue gives you a few minutes to play and stick it doesn't the minute you set it down it's not hardening the instant it comes in contact so you do have a little bit of play see I can still move that just a little bit and I like that and the glue sticks are kind of this opaque so they are a little different formula than what you're going to get in the craft stores and it looks like that other piece I cut off oh I'm gonna get two pieces from there awesome again you still can crumple crumple it once in a while pull up your side and check now for instance this this one's a little shorter that's okay I'm just gonna push him over and then when this sits on top you won't even know and as you can see I'm putting a good amount of glue I'm not you can see I'm not just doing a little bit um, these are heavy they're a little uh, you know than your normal paper and they are now stiffer so it's going to take a little extra glue and this is why I do not I did not use the glossy accents or score tape I tried my first one with the glossy accents score tape I tried everything the just the wet glue and it it took a lot longer 
See, and I do have glue oozing out the top. That's okay. See how that's starting to form. Oh, love it. Don't you just love it? It gives such a new look to your books. Now, I was able actually to get two of them on here with this. Not much waste at all that way. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm just really excited about the possibilities of all the different things these ruffles will do for us. And just to give you a little background, I, I do sew. In fact, I, own a bridal, I owned a bridal shop many years ago, 20 some years ago, and I handmade the wedding dresses. And then I was a nurse, and so I went back to nursing. And then I ended up with my child development degree because I loved children and I love, oh, I love working with paper and playing. But then my husband, when I started really getting into crafts, he's like, why don't you just quit, stay home and do this? Scared to death, but I did it. And so this is where I'm starting, a lot of my sewing has been coming back to me. So I have a lot of fun things in the works. Well, I think they're fun things that'll give your albums and cards a, a different look. Um, I don't know if they're out there on the internet. If they are, um, I've never seen them or learned those methods except for in sewing that I'll be doing later in more tutorials to come. And I hope you'll enjoy them. And like I said, share them, teach other people. And if you sell mini albums or cards and projects, there's no fear. You sell them, you st but I still want to see your work. I love to see the crafters work. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this one on the edge because it's a little crinkly, a little bit harder to work with. So I'm just going to glue my end down first. And then actually I'm just going to take my glue right on the book. Uh, because if you're making mini albums to sell, it always helps to have something a little new and different for those returning customers to bring them back. Now, if you find that you're having a little trouble like I am, for some reason this doesn't want to stick. I don't know if I... You can use... Some glossy accents you can use e6000 if you can get by the smell that's the only problem i have with e6000 and i think it takes a little longer to dry but wow this is not sticking and i had this happen before and i just think it it's possible like i've gotten the glitter spray there or the shimmer spray Now we're going to go to blue. Sometimes I don't like the way my end has come out. So, see, that's when I've cut it off. Maybe it just was too straight. Or you just didn't like it. One thing I have not tried this with, ow, see that's hot. I have not tried this with um, Graphic 45. I am going to try it. Um, graphic 45 paper is probably my favorite and then, this, and then Bow Bunny. But getting it wet, I'm not sure about because I it does crack when I bend it. And I don't know if anyone else has those problems. Wow, I'm making a mess here with the glue if anyone else has those problems, but I really haven't wet down, except for with flowers, some scrappy 45 paper, and it's a little different. Okay. See how pretty? And I hope that as you're making this, you yourself, you're marveling at the work you're doing because I think this is gorgeous. Again, 
not really doing a hard measure as you can see because you've got lots of pull. You've got lots of play. And I have to bring it closer now as so I'm getting closer to the top. Now, if you're this far up to the top, you might want to stop for a minute. You're going to kind of lay out some ruffles. And this is going to give you an idea. So it looks like, yeah, I need three more. Because you don't want to get up here and find, oh man, I ran out of room or I'm overlapping too much. So just do a soft measure there. I'm going to bring this down a little bit on top of that ruffle. And if you do so, well, unless you're like me, your sewing doesn't come out perfect. So, um, don't worry too much about your placement here because we don't sew perfect either. Let me move him over a little bit more. There we go. And it, you'll notice it'll get a little bit like you're going to feel it tighter as you're moving up because now you're getting a lot of weight there. Let's try this one. Apologize, my cat's getting right in my way. I'm gonna to have to move him after this. So if you see me disappear for a second, it's because I'm taking the kitty down. Okay, see I'm moving this up a little because You're going to have to go. Excuse me. Let me move the kitty. Yeah. See, and I did a, a little bit of the wrong measurement. So, we're going to be okay, though. Nope. Kind of there. Animals and kids, they always find you when you're trying to hide in the bathroom or your crack room. How they know we're down here, I have no idea. Okay. I'm squishing that out. The glue. I want that nice and flat as possible. Oh, no, we're doing okay. And my last one. I like this one, but I'm going to get that little ruffle there. Now, one thing to consider, if you want to put your last ruffle on, but say you want to finish this top off with, because it's, it's an unfinished edge, you need to put lace, you're going to need to put a ribbon, like I put those flowers. Um, if you want to put maybe a, the pearls across the top, if you want to use a thicker strand and just leave a space there, or do you want to go all the way to the top? And I'm just going to go ahead and basically put mine about 1 16th of an inch from the top. Let me 
bring these closer. Burn my fingers again. And now here, you don't want too much squishing out the top. Okay. I'll show you. We've got a couple of different options when you get to the top. Now, I hope that you were able to get to the top and, and it was frustration free. But there's your, there's your spine. Isn't that pretty? See your ruffles on the side, and then you can do a couple of different things. Let me grab That's the wrong color. There's a couple of things you can do. So you can take your bling, if you're using bling, you can lay that right across the top. So that gives you that option, depending on the paper you're using. Um, I have I have this in white, but this is a cream color, so let me just grab it. See how this has that nice finished edge? So I can actually lay now a piece of real lace over the top. I like that. We can make flowers. Um, I have this other lace. Just something so that you can finish off the top because of that raw edge. See on here, I used these flowers, and I will be carrying these pretty soon in the store, and they are just darling, they're a satin. So I just went across the top of that bare ruffle with that. So now you can go ahead and, and do that. Let me grab my lace. I'm going to use the white lace, sorry, just a moment. I should, sorry about leaving the camera like that. I thought I had more of the white lace. I'm going to say, I do. Uh -huh. Right there. Okay, it's Saturday morning. What can I say? There's Saturday morning cartoons. No, I'm going to match that to the edge. I'm just going to cut and make sure everything is perfectly straight. Now, I probably will take beads, pearls, across the top. Whoops. And you do, you want this almost as perfect as possible. Okay. And we can just go across the top of the ruffles, what I'm doing. That is so hot. Got that edge. Anything coming over the top. This is another thing I like my crochet hook for. Because I don't crochet. <laughs> oh, scissors on the floor. Now when we start decorating the cover, and we're going to do that after the pages, so we kind of did this, I know, a little different, I will, I will more than likely be putting either a strand of pearls across the top, I might even just put a flower in the middle, so go ahead and close your book. Now, let me bring this up so you can see. I've closed my book, now you want to check your edges. And I'm just going to go along the edge. I hope you can see. Okay, and I'm squishing. Turn it at an angle. I'm just lining my ruffle up. Now, if you have any glue, carefully clean it up. If you have any loose ruffles, you might. They might come up a little bit. You'll, you'll, 
you will be checking them because even though we dried the paper pretty good it's still I can guarantee you a little wet in the core and it's going to still have some shrinkage to it so go ahead and shape your ruffles but make sure they're away from your spine and and when you open and close sorry I can't see my screen because for some reason my cat today will not there we go go away and there you have your beautiful I'm telling you, I think it's beautiful ruffled spine look at the dimension it gives to your book the interest is just incredible when you look at it you're like oh. and then you have you have that side so I hope that you um, enjoyed this video and I hope that you will work on this so that when we come back now tomorrow we will be making oh guess what I just noticed Mine's backwards from yours. <laughs> guess what? I guess this is going to be a left-handed album this time. Well, see, it should have gone this way. That's okay. We're going to have a left-handed album. So, check your orientation. But if you didn't, and you ended up with a left-handed, be grateful we didn't do the inside. Sorry. Let me show you the difference. But that's okay, because this one opens this way. So this one is going to just open opposite, and I'm okay with that. So when we come back, we're going to do the inside. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and, and put your cover sheet. So let me show you which one I chose. And it's this, this yellow. So what I did with my paper, so I cut it. So that the, this bird cage is down here in the bottom, and this bird cage is now at top at the top. So you can go ahead, and I cut it just so it's one one eighth of an inch short. So it gave me about like one sixteenth here and there. Now you're going to cut it again. I cut it eight and a half by eight and a half. It was almost perfect, and then I just trimmed it down so it didn't hang over the paper. I mean, over the edges, and. Go ahead and, and you can get this put down and this piece put down. Now for the inside of this one, this was the extras if you ordered the kit. So you have two of these and this is the ones I used for this side and that side and then you will have enough left over because you had to use two sheets. And then you've got your spine pieces but we're going to be putting down our hinges here. We have our inside decorations we're going to be doing and we have We'll, we'll decorate that, but I usually do that next, last. So, if you have an envelope punch board for our next video, get your envelope punch board and your white paper. And if you don't have the envelope punch board, like I said, don't worry. I've figured out the dimensions, and you're going to still be able to make a, a, an envelope. And I'll be using this style envelope also along with these. And during this, we're going to do the heavy decorating. We're going to just, it's going to be gorgeous. You're going to have an album that you'll be proud of or that you can give as a gift. Um, then our cover, this part, we're going to do last because it'll be too hard to work with all of our dimensional flowers that we're going to be making. So pick out any five petal punch that you have or want for this. So I'm excited to see if you get this done. And you want to post a picture, I'd love to see it on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations to see how yours turned out. And we'll get back and we'll do the inside tomorrow. Thanks for watching.